Welcome to Disrespectfully with Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically, we're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How's your flank? My flank feels good. Your flank looks good. I mean, I can tell you, you have a glow about it. It's a, it's a proper flank glow. Like I can tell it's functioning properly. I, f- I look balanced. You do. If you're not watching this podcast right now, Katie looks like she's <laughs> going to the Grammys. Her makeup is flawless. I'm not. I'm going to the opposite, but I'm going somewhere after. What's the opposite of the Grammys? I, I know, know where you're going, but I don't know if that's considered the opposite. Maybe it is. It's not the opposite. I mean, but definitely not the Grammys. <laughs> what the hell? Do you have your setting spray on? No, I didn't set my face today. Well, I set it with powder, but I didn't use the one size. Mm. Love the one size. You do love the one size. I don't know that you'll be doing rigorous enough activity to require it, I would say. So yeah. I feel like you're... I don't have all day activities. Yeah, it's pretty lowbrow. <laughs> I need to address, I sound horrible, so I'm sorry. I obviously love you and our audience in this podcast because I feel like I'm dying, but we're going to get through it. I don't know, my... Whatever the, like metaphorical equivalent to a bad flank is is still like i'm dealing with that like whatever was happening last week i'm still figuring it out so just fyi you're just falling apart falling apart but we're gonna be back next week better than ever like there's no way this can continue so i think i have sure about that yes i think i have i hope so i think i i'm feeling like van gogh i think i have an ear infection i know he cut his off but i it's a different thing (laughs) i'm not gonna cut mine off i promise and give it to your lover yeah is that what he did actually what does anyone know what Van Gogh did with his ear? The circumstances in which Van Gogh cut off his ear are not exactly known, but many experts believe that it was following a furious row with Gauguin at the Yellow House. Is that an animal? I don't know. What's a Gauguin? Afterwards, Van Gogh allegedly packaged up the ear and gave it to a prostitute in a nearby brothel. He was then admitted to a hospital. Close. Okay, Leia, it's 2024. He gave it to a sex worker, not a <laughs> prostitute. But <laughs> I'm just reading Wikipedia. Maybe that's what I should do. We don't know. But go give it to a nice young lady. Uh, maybe I have gargoyle and I need to cut it off and find, an, find a nice <laughs> <laughs> find a nice lady of the evening to give it to. Lady of the night. Ooh. Give your ear to. Say, my lady. That's so romantic. What if someone handed you an ear and they were like, I made it for you. From oh, my God. My body. Did you, did you like that post that I, po- I tagged disrespectfully in <laughs> that meme? Is it a meme or is it a post? I don't know where that girl did the screenshot from her like Uber Eats driver or whatever. He's like, sorry, your order's running late. I'm bringing you a lemon from my tree. Body. 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 I don't care what, who, anything. If someone was like bringing me a lemon from their tree, I'd be like, that's a funny way to propose, but okay. I'm going to make out with you. Yeah, come inside. It's like the Sutton. I've been waiting. <laughs> with her like making out with her driver, I'd be like, Uber Eats, do you want to, this is enough food for two. I just, I want to throw that out there if you'd like to <laughs> There's join not me. two of us. I always order extra. So come on inside, Stephen. Exactly. Oh my God. Your favorite movie, The Holiday. It's like when she's like checking out and they're like, is someone's having a party? And she's <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you betcha. Here's the thing. I need to discuss this and I don't know if it's going to be relevant by the time this episode comes out, but it's really, really killing me. Well, What do you think is going on with Kate Middleton? I need to discuss it because the conspiracy theories are absolutely sending me because they're amazing. But what do you think is going on? What did the the royal house say? That she had some sort of medical related procedure? They I think they said abdominal surgery. Okay, well then why is that not sufficient enough? Why do why why do people not want to believe things when they put them out? I know often sometimes they want to just sort of like put it out to get people to like lay off but like that seems perfectly reasonable for her to just be resting and not out in the public that's a reasonable enough excuse for her to not be out and about as me i'm like speaking in i don't want to believe it no i think it is but how do you feel about the royals in general like do you watch the crown i have i don't watch it but i've i mean i've i've dabbled okay you dabbled (laughs) you're crown curious i'm crown (laughs) crown curious yeah i just think that they have obviously it's the royal family they're very proper so they do put spin on stuff and whatever so i get why people are feeling this way but there was a photo of her allegedly a few days ago in a car and it kind of was giving remember when queen elizabeth was like rolling in the range rover and she had like a hood up and it was like they see me rolling (laughs) like that yeah so people are saying it's not her and it she does she has these like mary kate olsen sunglasses circa 2006 and it's not it does look sus to me but some people were like, she got a BBL, which obviously she did not get. <laughs> Some people are like, she, please hold. 
yeah, some people are like organ transplant, which who knows, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it's just because she's so proper that, you know, it's like she gave birth and then walked out looking like Cinderella. Like they just she likes to keep that image up or they do. But maybe she got a mommy makeover. I don't think that that's the craziest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if she got anything extreme done, any kind of plastic surgery, any kind of any, it's going to be obvious when she finally does like come back out into the world. So can't really lie about that. But I mean, I think if it was an invasive type of surgery where you cannot be walking around because there could be some type of movement that could cause some internal bleeding, she's got to lay up, you know, rest up. Well, I am increasingly surprised by how fugly I am willing to look in person. Yesterday, I went to Takaya to get lunch. and I was going to pick it up, but I was so hungry. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to sit here. And I looked and there was no one. It was really it was early. So there was like no one in there. And I was like, I am so foul right now. I'm wearing like my Levi's matching sweatsuit, like trying to get my Tony Soprano on. But there's a stain on it <laughs> as per usual. <laughs> my hair is unkempt. Like it was a whole thing. And she they just could never get away with that. So I'm like, imagine no. how invasive of a life it would be to never be able to like be that way and not how be seen. isolating. I mean, yeah, when I was married, I would go out looking like straight up trash. I didn't care because like, who, who am I trying to attract? I don't care what, you know, it didn't matter to me. And that's like not the right attitude to have because I, you know, my mom always said, take pride in your looks, like always look nice when you go out. And I was like, Ugh. but now that I'm like single, I'm like always trying to at least like try to look somewhat put together because like you never know. People always say that you never know who you're going to meet. Sometimes you never I, know. Sometimes I see a hot person in the wild and I'm like trying to make <laughs> eye contact. And then I remember when I, they're like, <laughs> you catch your reflection in like a window. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> You're, yeah, it's just really yeah. upsetting. But I just don't like I'm always like I miss the 50s when people like, you know, had their cute little outfits. They're always put together. And I'm like, bitch, if you lived in the 50s, you'd look exactly the way you look right now. So I don't know. You would have been more of a pariah because it wasn't as socially acceptable. Yeah. And we live in L.A. where it's like athleisure wear all the time anyway. I know. Well, that that's what I used to put on just to like go out, just be like, well, this is an outfit. But I don't do that anymore. Like I actually just put on clothes. It takes it takes no real time to do that. Stop shouting at me. I'm aware, I'm but I mean, I wear a sweatshirt to this every single week. It's and you kind always of have a cute little fit. It's kind of fun to do. Well, it's like the clothes that I have for daytime. Just they never see the light of day. It's like bats come out of my closet when I open it. <laughs> but it's like I just go to my legging drawer. But <laughs> the legging drawer. The legging drawer. Everyone, every every lady has a legging drawer. I know that thing. When I open that one, bats come out. God, I, I aspired. I hope I am that person someday. I got like four leggings that go in rotation and they don't even make it in the drawer. They just go on like a chair. I know. I look <laughs> I look at mine. I'm like, OK, do I want to wear my pilled leggings today? <laughs> my faded gray leggings today? My new leggings today that feel like shapewear? Not the pilled. <laughs> <laughs> my leggings have more pills than a pharmacy because I've had <laughs> I've had pairs that I've had for so many years that are like, you know that TikTok noise that's like, help me. I need you to kill me. <laughs> that's what mine are like. You have to peel them. Literally. <laughs> like, are these going to unravel today? <laughs> this, hold on. I'm hot. <laughs> I am too. And I just am. No, I, they're like string cheese. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's really upsetting. <laughs> also, those are so good. When's the last time you had one? All the time. Because you know who likes them? Gordo. Butter. Mmm. You dangle it above him chance. and he goes. I want to do that next time I come over and I see him. Oh, um, yeah, it's fun. We share we share string cheese. He knows he knows the That's sound. So he knows the sound of a rubber is really cute. Do you guys lady in the tramp, though? No, he's too aggressive about it. Mm. Nothing's going to come between him you and come that in string. with stitches over a string cheese. <laughs> That's the last thing I want is another scar on my <laughs> face. I got enough of that going on. I've only had stitches one time and it was in my forehead right before my sister's wedding because I impaled myself with fake antlers. Ma'am, how do you? Okay, so I'm a clumsy elf, as you know, <sighs> okay. and I was cleaning, first mistake, and I had, <laughs> ba this is, okay, so this is like 2017, so I had those like three faux antlers you know they were all white like it was just like a decoration oh yeah yeah we were coming out of those type of eyebrows and the <laughs> eye you know the fall makeup that everyone had year round 2016 uh-huh yeah 20 yeah 20 so we're coming out of that so i have that aesthetic and i'm like cleaning my room and i go to pick up a pillow really fast 
and I impale myself with an antler. I literally stand up and it's in my skull. <laughs> And I grab it because I was like in shock. And then I just felt blood coming like it. down my face. And I, yeah, I ran in the bathroom and I was like scared to look at it. I called my sister crying, went to the urgent care, got a few stitches. And so in all of her, it was her, I think her bridal shower was that week. So in all of her mm -hmm. photos from that, I just have stitches in my forehead from an antler. Mm, hot. Anyway. Great story. It's the best story I've ever told, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever felt the cool like leave you? Like if you're talking to like a hot person or something or just in general, like you're just, I don't know. Do you ever, like have just like a, like a software glitch? I'm looking at you in puzzlement right now. Cause that happens to me all the time. Yeah. Obviously it's like, I have so many conversations where I'm like, I'm better than this. I'm off my game. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, need to get my groove back. Did you have a situation that happened about this recently? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> no, I was just talking to this guy that was like really hot. And I was just like, I don't know what happened. But like I was, just, it was a really simple conversation. Just trying to say like, okay, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, gruel. I'm going to just say cool. And then I started saying great. Mm. Like one of those where you're like, oh. Wait, what movie is that from? Mean Girls. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And you're just like, all I had to say was like one thing. And then I just like said something really cringe. Was this an in-person conversation? No, it's through text. But then also just like in person, then you kind of like, you might just like do something and you're like, God. I don't have insomnia. I have embarrassment from the last mm. 33 years. That's what keeps me up at night. You think about, I'm like, you're fucking weird. Why did you say that? Stop. All the time. Weird. Wait, is this someone we know about? Is this the. Guy? Yeah. Mm, okay. So is that activated? What's happening there? Nothing. Um, but then he also mm. kind of did the same thing. So. Okay. I think we're both like the same kind of awkward thing where we were just incapable of being cool in front of each other. Well, maybe you just intimidate him so much. But I feel like it never happens with the other hot people. Like, I do that a lot, but I never notice that the person that it's happening to, like, I never get that meeting in the middle of like, oh, you're also cringe. It's either they're cringe or I'm cringe, which probably explains why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? No, I don't think that's, I think you're always cool. Thank you. I think you're always cool. Well, you couldn't say anything cringe to me if you tried. Don't try. Okay. <laughs> don't try. Don't try. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but it was fucking funny. The comment you left about Tom's new girl. Listen, when I, I see like something and I have and something funny comes to mind, I'm going to I'm going to write it. <laughs> if there's one thing about Katie, she's going to leave a comment if something comes to mind. So, well, page six had reposted this story about like Tom and this like new girl that he's seeing. Really cute girl. I don't have any like feelings about that. Like he's dating. I'm dating. It is what it is. I only had issues when it was like somebody in the friend group when we had an agreement. That was the only issue or when it was someone I didn't like. But whatever. At this point, I don't give a fuck. So page six had just put this post on Instagram and Katie Flood from Below Deck, who he like had like a little fling with last winter um, at Winter House, <laughs> who he had such an issue with calling her by her name because it was Katie. We have the same name. He was like, I can't, I can't call you Katie. I'm going to call you something. It was just like, dude, call her by her. Like it, it was just, it was such a bizarre issue that he had. So she commented <laughs> under it first and said, at least her, her name is not Katie. And so I replied to her comment. And I'm like, he'll probably end up calling her Katie by accident. LOL. Because honestly, like you're going to be with me for like over a decade, then date Katie and not accidentally call someone, you know, like people call her like people by the wrong names by accident. Uh, it was a joke. And it was funny. And it was funny. I need to clarify because then I saw that <laughs> on comments by celebs and I commented on it and in all caps because it was I was cracking up because they referred to her as first of all, she's very cute. I'm happy for them. That's great. Date. Mm -hmm. Have a, I, I'm like nothing bad to say about it. But I was like, not recent college grad because page six is messy and they're yeah. like the recent college grad i'm sure there's many other things that they could say about this lovely young lady yeah. so i commented because it made me laugh and then people <laughs> were like get off the hate train and then i understood people were probably interpreting it that i was like she's so young i do not care about their age difference good for them i wasn't hating on any no not it was a joke yeah i deleted it because like people were being so weird. i was like no i was just saying page six you are such a messy bitch
Do you know what I've been loving? Tell me. I've been loving some Daily Harvest. Ooh, Same. Girl. I've been like really busy with travel and work. And Daily Harvest has been a serious lifesaver for me. Game changer. Super effortless and it's not perishable and it comes just right to my door. I can just like go to my freezer, open it up, pop in my little blender and I have something delicious. Yeah, you're in full goblin mode and you just go into the freezer and it's like the only thing that's good about your day. I'm like, health, <laughs> yes. Daily Harvest is for anyone who cares about the type of food they put in their bodies. It can be super confusing because even if something is easy to prep or looks good for you, the label's full of ingredients that you try and avoid. It looks like it's healthy, yeah. it's really not. That's why I love Daily Harvest. They say no gluten, no fillers, seed oil, added sugars, starches, and it's just, it's an easy yes for me. I don't often eat until I'm hungry and then- Starving. You know. So it's it's so convenient and it's right there for me. Also, there's no prep time. The cleanup is hardly anything. Also, with over 10 different collections, there's something for everyone. Everyone can find something they like. They have smoothies, soups, harvest bowls, and my personal favorite, desserts, because I have such a sweet tooth. And I just never get bored when it comes to meals and snacks. And you know how much I love my snacks. So you can have Daily Harvest just as it is, or you can add a little zhuzh if you want. A little je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I personally am loving their acai and cherry. They have so many good smoothies, like dragon fruit. Like, I didn't even know what dragon fruit was before Daily Harvest. And now I'm like, I'm so fancy. I like the mint one. It's like mint chocolate. I'm a mint chocolate chip gal, so I feel feel like that's like a nice like replacement for like mint chocolate chip ice cream mm -hmm. and then the strawberry and peach smoothie is my other favorite one i love and i love the harvest bowls too when i first thought of daily harvest i thought it was just smoothies but they have so much stuff i made their pasta the other night for dinner took five minutes it was so easy mm -hmm. to reheat and it was delicious the flatbreads delish the range and options is what I really enjoy it. By using only recyclable or compostable packaging when possible, Daily Harvest is also doing their part to take care of the earth, which you and I care so much about. Take the guessing out of eating well and try Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash disrespectfully to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash disrespectfully for $30 off your first box and free shipping dailyharvest.com slash disrespectfully d-i-s-r-e-s-p-e-c-t-f-u-l-l-y i took my everything shower this morning mm. and i feel like a dolphin couldn't feel more incredible i could be having a horrible day i take my everything shower and then it's not so bad i'm transformed i'm hotter i'm feeling good it's honestly crazy how body care can just boost your overall well-being i completely agree and I do have to say that Osea has taken my body care up a notch. Osea's clinically proven Mega Moisture Duo leaves my skin feeling so bright and soft. I just love it. You look supple today. Osea's best-selling Mega Moisture Duo, Andaria Algae Body Oil, and Andaria Collagen Body Lotion are unmatched. Also, collagen, put it in everything. And I agree with you. My skin feels bright and soft. Supple. <laughs> Another thing I love is just that instant firming hydration all over my body. I just want it to feel like these seaweed powered heroes provide the results you can see and confidence you can feel with skincare level ingredients normally reserved for face products. And you can get 10% off your first order with our code disrespectfully at oseamalibu.com. I love getting premium skincare products at such an incredible value. And Osea actually makes me feel confident and rejuvenated in my skin. I always feel so incredible walking out of the door after using my Osea products. That's actually one of my favorite feelings ever in the world. When you're like super clean and you walk out the door this air touches your skin you're like does everyone know how soft i am right now i'm like floating on a cloud show your skin some love with clean vegan skin and body care from osea get 10 percent off your first order site-wide with code disrespectfully at oseamalibu.com you'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over 60 dollars head to oseamalibu.com and use code d-i-s-r-e-s-p-e-c-t F-U-L-L-Y for 10% off. It was just, everyone's like, oh my God, leave him alone. Stop bullying him. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm always going to roast him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not that deep, y'all. My question to you would be, because I have recently, I've had a problem with this. I've almost called several people and it's one person's name who does not exist in my world anymore that I don't know why it, this is the name that always comes up for me. What would you do if someone called you out of your name, like another 
woman's name like a guy that i'm seeing yeah are they calling me their ex's name yeah like an ex's name the thing is i can i i get it that can happen but it's like if they haven't been with this person for literal years that's weird mm -hmm. it's not as weird because it's like tom and i are in contact with each other so if yeah so if it's if the same situation where they're like they see the person on the same time like tom and i work together like we're still very much like in each other's lives in some capacity you know mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, but if this person's ex is like, they don't talk to them, they don't see them, they're not in their lives, that would be weird. I think it would be weird too. And I probably should be more forgiving because it's, I've like caught myself. So I don't yeah. know why that's happening to me. And it's maybe, you know, when you're afraid of something, so you like, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it keeps yeah. coming up. Like, I feel like that's going to happen to me. And I guess it's also different. Like, are we saying it over coffee or are we <laughs> saying it when we're bumping uglies? Like, yeah, that's a problem. What, it's it's the when. What is the context into why? And it's also like, do, do I remind you of them? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Have you ever done it? I forgot someone's name. A, a person that I, I had dated for a period of time. They had like an A name. Like it was a name that started with an A. And I just introduced them by like a different A name. You're like, Amanda, please. Their name was something... It started with an A and I like it was like an Andrew or like an Alex and I called them by the office. I once I mean, I've been off dating apps for a while and it fucking feels good, but I was on a hinge date and I it was a J name and now I cannot remember even I think it was not like, a J name. Uh, it was a J name. and It was like a Jason or Jacob or whatever, whatever the name was. I went up and I was like, hi, blah, blah, blah. So nice to meet you. And he paused and I was like, oh. <gasps> that's tomorrow's date and then so oh, i had no. yeah i had mixed it up but i tried to duck and roll with it didn't go so well that was the only date we had are you ever worried that like certain like little bits that you might have with people that you talk to you'll forget what bits you have with certain people and bring it up and then they're like what are you talking about yeah <laughs> do you know what i did recently <laughs> i sent someone a photo because i was positive that it was theirs I sent someone a photo of socks and I was like, are these yours? Because they were weird and very specific. Okay, that is, and that he is. responded back and was like, I have never seen those in my life. <laughs> <laughs> one of my worst Idiot. One of my worst fears. And they were such specific looking socks that I don't want to describe them to <laughs> protect the innocent. But I was like, and then I was like, oh, that makes more sense for this other person. So that was a bummer. And it's like that I got a TikTok noise where it's like, who do you fuck in the city when I'm not there? When it shows like <laughs> someone that's like, hey, you forgot your Victoria's Secret pajamas at my place. And then it cuts to the girl and she's dressed like a goblin. And so it's like obviously not hers. <laughs> so that was a massive bummer. And then I have done that before when I said I'm on a date. I was like, well, we were just talking about this the other day. And I went into detail and I ruined it by getting further and further. And I was like, no, it was you. And we were talking about this. And he was like, we have never discussed that. And I was like, it must have been my priest. <laughs> <laughs> then i go into usher confessions i'm like thou shall not ho <laughs> watch this watch this <laughs> i know have you ever sent someone a photo of something that ended up not being theirs because that was horrifying no i'm just worried that i'm gonna like bring up like a jokey thing and be like ha ha i thought you laugh at this and they'd be like what are you talking about um i'll just if i can't be certain i'm just like i'm just not gonna do it and then i get a bum because i'm just like god I, this would be so great like ah this would get such a laugh right now but i just don't know if this is the person who do i laugh with this about and then i'm going through I'm like fuck which one i mean i don't know better safe than sorry i would say i've learned <clears throat> that but yeah. i okay in addition to earlier we're like do you feel the cool leaving your body the other thing i do is i do the wrong thing all the time and as i'm about to do it i tell myself not to and then I just do it anyway. And then afterward, I'm like, why did you do that? You knew you shouldn't have done that. Always trust your gut. Always. I always pick the wrong line. That's like the same thing. Probably in terms of what? <laughs> like, like, you know what? Opener? Okay, the wrong grocery store line, mm. the wrong line at the airport, you know, when they're like, after they check your like ID and then like you have to go pick like the line to actually like go through security. I'm like, God. Which one? And I try to see like, okay, who has like the kids? Which one is like the people that look like they've never done this before in their lives? You're using context clues and everything. 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to scan the room. I wonder if those like Apple <laughs> Vision Pros could like help. Oh, we're talking, you should also we're like watch this with them at the airport and just like trying to navigate. If there's a 50-50 chance, I'm going to get it wrong. That's just, what were we just talking about? Like one thing about you, you're going to comment something funny. One thing about me, 50-50 is too high stakes. Like I will pick wrong, which makes you think, okay, then just pick the opposite of what you think. But then when I do that, still wrong. I know. Devastating. But I always like, even even as funny as my comment is, and I laugh to like my ass off, I still like regret it. I'm like, oh man, I know people are going to like, it's going to land for a lot of people, but this is just going to get reposted. Da, 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 da. Like this is going to be a long day of like this. The one that you said recently that was so fucking funny is you were like, one of the Toms did something stupid. It was probably say it all, And you like commented on it. I was like, hey, and, Schwartz, you want to come and explain to everyone what he actually meant to say? <laughs> yes. And then I, but again, I like tried to say it, but it was just too funny of an opportunity. I was like, Katie, what are you doing here? <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> it's usually in the morning time, like right when I'm awake. I'm the funniest. I woke up the other day at 7, 6.45 in the morning and I was texting with somebody, something to do with hot dogs. And I was like, I was just, I was really on, I was on fucking fire. And I was like, it's 6.45 in the morning and I'm the funniest person I know already. Like, this has set the bar really high for today. For the day. You yeah. You go down from there. I know, but like pretty good. You're like a, someone who's, losing the memory their memory later in life they have like sunset hours so you're funniest <laughs> in the morning yeah and it's just downhill it's when i do my best work speaking of hot dogs that gasp was the cutest thing i've ever heard in my life <gasps> what about him? the excitement <laughs> well this was just funny to me so we had posted this someone posted <laughs> a it was a hot dog candle from costco and it was like obviously made up of like what it smells like to have your pop and your hot dog mm. and it's like such a specific smell and someone responded back to it and was like we have a message for you from your spirit guides, higher power. And I was like, they would come through hot dog. Yeah, that feels right to me. That was on brand for this podcast. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Spirit gods and guides. We didn't take the bait. We didn't get the message because I was like, what could uh, they have to tell me through they're this? Like, Venmo me $800. And I'll let you know. <laughs> it's been such... It smells like a scam. That's what it smells like. It does. What were you going to talk about back tickles about? I mean, this is like such a right turn. It has nothing to do with hot dogs or Costco, but... To me, back tickles and hot dogs are like... Love. These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> Love languages. <laughs> On the boat, not to bring it back to the... The cruise? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm We can always bring it back to the cruise. We can always bring... Which is honestly... Remember when I thought I got away with murder with the sink water? This is probably a sink water ear infection. <laughs> You have an amoeba. I have an amoeba and it's in my ear and that's what's happening. So this probably is sink water What if related. it's just eating you from the... I'm just kidding. Okay, it's, sorry. You know I'm a hypochondriac. Don't do that. Okay. I'm going to look on Reddit when we the second we're done with this. I'm joking. <sighs> Not I'm your best work. I'm joking. Okay, anyways. So I don't know. We Somehow we got in the conversation of back tickles because I was like sexting someone about back tickles. Did I tell you about my back tickles? Did I, I think we did, but we'll refresh. Let's bring the group into the well, conversation. This is kind of my cringe moment a little well i don't know so this really hot guy that um i hung out with recently <laughs> when i was going to sleep he's like i'm gonna put you to sleep and i was like oh, all right so he was tickling my back and it like back tickles like really do it for me they feel like really nice and they're lovely and they will put me to sleep but like he was tickling my back and i was just like I feel like I have like electricity, like all on my body. Like my skin felt like so nice, like, but like everywhere felt really nice. Like, I don't know, this guy like really, yeah. So I said that to him. I was like, I feel like my skin is like buzzing. And he's like, it's either the cutest thing or the cringiest thing. And I was like, what? That's obviously the cutest thing ever. Like cringy. Also keep that to yourself. Yeah. So I, of course, thought about that for the next, I'm still thinking about that. Is that an ick? No, that's I mean, also, I'm like, we're just hyping up your skills as a back tickler. Cause wouldn't, then you'd be wouldn't shocked. You, wouldn't you want to know if somebody was like having like if like you if you touch somebody and you're like, hey, uh, I have a really nice reaction to your touch. Thanks. Well, 100 percent. But also you'd be shocked at how many people are bad at back tickling. It is <sighs> not long division. Hey, it's, you're really good with your hands. That's cringy. No, that's not cringy. I mean, I use I use more descriptive words than that, but like, I don't know. I don't think it was cringy. I don't think it is either. But also, back tickling is like more important to me than penetration. Yeah. So, it's more, do you feel that way? Like, I could, I if you could have 
back it's tickles, very intimate. Back tickles or sex for the rest of your life, and you have to choose one. What are you choosing? Back tickles. I think back tickles for me. Like that is what puts me to sleep again. Do I have insomnia or do I just need my back tickled? Probably the latter. Yeah. Like it's it, it was, is it's very intimate. Then we run into issues because we were also talking for some reason like bad kissing came up and it was like <gasps> when someone with like their nubby fingernails or they just they act like they've never touched it back. And I'm kind of like, are you doing that? Because you just don't want to do it. So you're trying to act bad at this because guess what? I'm still going to take it. I'm still going to take your <laughs> shit back tickles. Just like I'll accept probably your mediocre love at some point. Like, <laughs> like I'm not, you're not getting out of this because you're even acting when bad it's at it. Bad. It's still like kind of good. That describes like not only many of my relationships, but like a lot of sex. It's still like, eh. I could work with it. I can, yeah. I can work around this and work yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, bad kissing though is like, like really wet kissers. What's worse, like a really wet kisser or somebody that like just uses too much tongue? I mean, I think those things coincide. No, not necessarily. I mean, well, like, what are you describing then? Someone that's just like, oh, yeah. Just, uh, there's, somebody that, there's, people, there's people that literally just go like this with their like mouth and it's just like wet. OK, here's the thing. They're so everywhere, like bad kissers and. For me, what defines a bad kisser is someone that can't get into a groove with you. So like mm -hmm. everyone likes different things, but it's about reading the room or reading thy tongue, which is, I guess, how we're going to put it. Like someone who is not at all paying attention to what you're doing or what you're obviously leaning into because it's what you like. And they just like, yeah, I would say too much tongue when you're really into someone love a lot of tongue like you get into it. But if you're if you're not there yet or you haven't built up or it's just like even like a first kiss and all of a sudden they are licking your esophagus it's a problem mm -hmm. like what do you think this is sexy what's your least favorite bad kisser the like the the ones that are it's just wet and it's like they're not doing anything like with their tongue they're just sort of like it's just it's like a little like clammy little darty tongue yeah it's like the, 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 do you have any skill here like there's there's a bit of an art absolutely to, to like what you're supposed to be doing here and you clearly haven't learned it and so you're, you're not really you're not paying attention to like what i'm trying to do you're not trying to match what i'm trying to do you're just doing like whatever like what are you doing are you an iguana <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah are you a frog like i don't understand what's happening right now i would say worse than like over wet though is like cat tongue over dry have you ever had that mm. someone mm. who's like you should take a sip of water like what is <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do think in general it's just someone who can't can't read the room. But I, and in in general, in my experience, I don't. I I literally can't think of one woman in my life that I've ever kissed that I was like that was disgusting. But mm -hmm. I I would say like a big population of men that I've kissed have been like, who hurt you? Like who has <laughs> lied to you? Someone has. Those, and those are the same men that are like very confident in their ability to make you climax or like believe you when you fake it. Like, I'm like, why? I mean, I know I'm good, but like, that is crazy. I was so that was you really think I enjoyed that? That was insane. Do you. OK, do you fake it? No, I do in a very specific circumstance. What does what this? Circum oh, when you want it to be over. When I want it to end. Oh, when yeah. I, oh, okay. OK, 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 OK. okay but okay, but okay, if it's okay, like okay. I like it, but it's just not going to happen. I would do I like maybe in my early 20s. But now the only time I do that when I'm like, let's get it over with. OK, if I feel like, oh, he's like waiting for that. Mm -hmm. okay, OK, Uh, yeah, then. Yeah, you can tell. When they like they just and you're they're so hopeful and you're like it's just yeah not gonna happen like this is... more disrespectfully you're a bad kisser more honesty 2024 I've, maybe I've, that's I've a big kissed, campaign I mean, this listen, year listen it's it's those are w way more few and far between though like thank God it's been I haven't kissed a lot of bad kissers it's it's been a while but it's there's I've definitely I mean I can think of some probably in the last year that I've just been like but it, for someone that. I haven't. I, it's been a. It's been a while since I've kissed someone that I'm like, Ooh, never again. For me, it's like if it's someone I think it's worth investing in. I'll like. I'm. I also feel like in the last few years, I've been a lot more confident of being able to tell someone like what I like or what I don't like. So if I think someone's worth my time, but if I'm on a bad date with the toe grabber and I don't want to, like, I know it's not going to be a thing. I'm like, I, this is not worth. Yeah. Pursuing for me, but yeah, a bad kiss is just. That's it. We, when we were talking about X, that is the worst. Like that is like it's a no. It's a non-starter for me. I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a movie trailer. I'm <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I don't think I want to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs>
<sighs> I've had some really good kissers though lately. But the problem is on the flip side of that, a good kisser can ruin your life because this someone that I was stuck in limerence with from last year, I mean, it was the best kissing of my life. And then there was a lot of staring. Don't look in their eyes. That's where you lose your, that's where like pretty don't woman, look in it's the like, eye. don't look them in their eyes. If you stare at someone in the eyes for an hour and then you're just having the best kissing of your life, you're fucked. Yeah, you're under a spell. It's almost worse when someone's a really good kisser because then it's like when it's ripped away from you and the rug, yeah, the rug is pulled from underneath you. You're like, well, thanks for that also, that I'm never going to have again. Legally blonde. You gave me the best night of my life and then I never hear from you again. She slaps him. <laughs> you should be ashamed. I don't know. People, I guess, when listening to this could make the argument that we are impossible to please, which is If possible. you're wondering, I'm a really good kisser, though. Fantastic. Yeah. Like, I mean, that goes without saying. We're obviously <laughs> great, wonderful kissers. Clearly. I encourage anyone I've ever kissed to write in and say I'm not because I will, I will hunt you down. Well, yeah, obviously, I'm, this isn't coming from my own opinion. I can't kiss myself. This is just coming from reviews. Reviews. Yeah. I got five <laughs> stars on the Yelp of kissing. It's like, come on. They should have a wiki feet version of good kissers. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Should we start the wiki feet for good kissing? No, we should just uh, make people fill out like a. <laughs> I want references. Comment, rate, review at the at the end of a date. Just like if you don't mind. Like, you know, when someone, you know, when like uh, you, when you get out of the Uber, like, hey, uh, do you mind leaving five stars? Either you just I just flip my phone around. And say, I have a couple questions for you before you leave. And they like mind, the tip. Do you mind just filling you, this out? Can you just the percent there sign it? Go ahead and let me know. Yeah, just it's just like overall experience, any feedback, comments, questions, that's concerns. That's it. Did you ever see that Black Mirror episode of what Bryce tells Howard? And did you like when you have any interaction, you like do your phone at them and it's like how you get your rating in life? Like perhaps we could bring that into the fold. Uh, no, I don't like Dark, that. Dark, scary no, stuff. No, I don't want that. I don't even watch that show. I don't even know why I watch it because it's just too dystopian and like freaks me out, which is the point, but. Yeah. Life's hard enough. We're already living in it. We're, we're living it. We're so. in Black Mirror. Am I the world's dumbest person that I didn't know that that was a reference to your phone? Black Mirror? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, yeah. referencing is the, the, this. When your phone is clicked mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that forever. I recently kind of found that TikTok. out. TikTok. TikTok University. TikTok University teaches me everything I need to know and more. Perhaps we should do a series on TikTok of what constitutes a good kisser. But anyway. Are you selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify is here to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. No matter the size of your business, Shopify helps you take it to the next level. They, I just love how much they empower the people who use their platform. Like people more than ever have been able to make their own businesses and it's because they give them the tools to do so. Running a growing business means getting the insights you need wherever you are. With Shopify's single dashboard, you can manage orders, shipping, and payments from anywhere. Who wants to go to multiple places for that? We mm. want it all in one place. And they make analyzing your online marketing campaigns super easy so you know exactly what's effective for your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs in every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Is there? We talk about this all the time. Is there anything worse than having to call in and getting stuck talking to a bunch of people? <laughs> it's nice to have that easy support. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash disrespectfully, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash disrespectfully now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash disrespectfully do you know what else i learned about on tiktok tell me people talking about their cryptic pregnancies those that are, was a that was a weird corner of tiktok i ended up on 
how is that even a thing? Because I've the people who talk about this a lot of times are like very thin little people that will show photos of themselves when they were like nine months pregnant. They're like, yeah, I was having like some like weird like cramping. So like I was just like, oh my God. And then I like the next thing I know, I was like giving birth and I'm like, hold on. I was having weird cramping and I had a bladder infection that spread my kidneys. Like you had a whole baby? Imagine the shock of someone you just like think you have a UTI nine, and someone hands for you. For nine months, you had no other indications, no other like symptoms of pregnancy until like you were literally giving birth. How is that fucking possible? Well, and don't they say that some of them like have some sort of period every or what they thought was a period or. Yeah. So, they, so, so, but this is terrifying to me that like you could still like be like going about life, doing activities that you should absolutely not be doing be getting some semblance of a period and then just like pop out a child that's like healthy they're having like sake bombs with their sushi <laughs> eating a club sandwich all that's the way what I mean, just carrying on in life that like like and then delivering like a healthy child are these kids these children aren't okay i i, I mean i know like I in like so. the, the like 60s and you know, whatever, like people were like smoking through their pregnancy. Well, let's take it up to the nineties because we don't know. I'm, I am <laughs> but I mean, I am when it was reason. when it was like far more like common, acceptable. And, yeah, common. <laughs> you trying to fight me right now? I'm not fighting you over that. I don't know. Common. Um, and people, you know, are walking around and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, due in June." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a girl. I mean, also, she comes out with a marble in her hand. I will say that majority of the people that are having these cryptic pregnancies are a lot younger so i think they're i don't know what that means but i want to just google i'm guessing because it's called cryptic they still don't know but like where's bill nye when he didn't what is that like how does that happen <laughs> <Where's Bill Nye? laughs> i need him for lots of things a cryptic pregnancy or stealth pregnancy is when a pregnant stealth. person doesn't know they're pregnant duh in some case in in some cases a person may only realize they're pregnant because labor begins most people don't realize they're pregnant until somewhere between four and 12 weeks. So, yeah. OK, but there's not there's literally just no a stealth. Pre I'm like, what is a SEAL Team 6 of baby <laughs> making? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just wonder, like, how how does that? Obviously, it does. Or like the ladies that give birth on a plane because they don't know. Like, that's probably prob like, I just cryptic. sat down to pee and then there's a baby coming out. I'm like. Do you think you could deliver a baby? Like if it was an like emergency? Me? No, oh, like, like someone else's. Like if I was about to have a baby, a cryptic no, pregnancy. No. <laughs> Whenever there's an emergency happening around me, do you know what I do? Mind your business. <laughs> think. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, I hope if you're ever dining next to Katie Maloney and you need to have a baby. No, that... I'm useless. I, fr I freeze. I'm like, there was one time I was going somewhere with my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> not your grandma tell me what happened <laughs> and we're sitting at the airport and this guy at my feet collapses and i'm like, <laughs> like this <laughs> not this <laughs> well first of all She's like, i was young what the fuck am i gonna do how what? old uh i was like maybe like 18 i don't know like uh, uh, no maybe it was a little older i don't know but like, what the fuck i was just like i was literally like this I just froze and I stared. I was like, I, it, I was just trying to process like what was happening. And by the time I was in processing, like people were running in and I was like, oh, God, I snapped out of it. But like it, the same thing happens when there's like an earthquake. <laughs> I just sit there and I'm like, I have no survival skills. There could be a train coming just at my face and I'll just be like, I just freeze. I, I just saw a TikTok of this girl. It was like her first day of work and it was a camera shot. And she goes, falls back and it's like, bow, like hits her head. And the uh, coworker just stands there like this and walks over <laughs> her mean? arm that's draped out to go alert someone. And everyone in the comments like, you could not be less helpful. That is, was it a video of you? Do you work at Del Taco? In spare, spare <laughs> no, time? I could probably be a little more helpful. But honestly, I don't know, like CPR. One time I was choking <laughs> on a, a piece of like steak or whatever at a Korean barbecue and I was there's people around and I'm like literally like it's almost lights out and I'm like you like the spare rib is how I go no it's like a little like piece of meat and it's like I'm like literally choked like I'm again just lights are going out and I'm with a table of people and I I couldn't I'm kind of coughing but like no one's like looking at me like are you okay 
I just like put my head in like in like Tom's lap. I reach my hand into my throat. Like I did you have press ons at the time or was it just your good strong nails? <laughs> it's just my fingers. And I reach all the way back into my throat and I pluck that thing out. Tell me you don't have survival skills. So I, do Those have, are survival I, skills. I do, I do, I do. But it, I think it just has to like click in at some point that like it's like life or death. Well, now I know the only time you mind your business is when there's an emergency. Listen, I could probably help somebody if I really needed to. I but think no, could... deliver a baby. Mm, maybe I don't know. What, like, how, how do you? I could catch it. Yeah. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> Come here. Delulu is the Salulu, and I worked in healthcare sales. Like, I've been in surgery a lot, so my inflated ego of what I think my abilities are could get me in trouble. Because if we're on a plane and someone's having a baby, like, is there a doctor? And I'm like, kind of. And I just <laughs> I would fucking stand up and run down that aisle, and I'd be like, gloves. Like a little bit. Um, I think I think I could deliver. I don't a baby. get like easily grossed out, so I I could like I could be down there. Yeah, I mean I've been I've been like I see the head. You'd go in with your the same plucking your beef plucking fingers. It's crowning. <laughs> the beef plucking fingers would get it anyway. We she's since washed her hands, but I would <laughs> same thing. Like I have a high threshold for gross things. So with and trigger warning blood. I'm like I've been splattered in surgery. I don't want to tell you what else these have had to pluck. Yeah, those are maybe that's what that's like the equivalent of the suction thing. It's like these or are salt. Pl- these had to just pluck, go in there. These have had to plug a lot of unfortunate things yeah, from a have. lot of unfortunate places. Anyway, so if there's an emergency and you see us out in public, definitely look for me because I will. I will get and in there. And then I will eventually come to aid once mm-hmm. I snap out of my. It's it's like it's a it's two seconds that I'm like. And then I'm like, oh my God, what the hell's happening? You know? Yeah. I mean, but some people can act a lot faster. Some people that it doesn't, that doesn't even happen to them. But I was just like, <clears throat> the man collapsed. I was like, did he just die? D- is he okay? Do we- you okay, dude? Who's in your basement this week? Okay. Do you want to know who's in my basement? I- yeah. Okay. Well, I my people, okay. In my basement are the people who <laughs> consistently, and vigorously at times have to correct and often overcorrect shit that doesn't fucking matter on the internet. For instance, um, on the last episode, we were talking about pasta, but we're referring to noodle. I refer to penne as a noodle. People are like, it's, it's not a noodle. Penne is not a noodle, it's pasta. I'm like, actually, it's the same fucking thing. I'd just like me like you're not a noodle. Leave me alone. I was like, it's the same fucking thing. Guess what? When I say when I but when I say pen noodle, you know what I'm talking about, right? And when you say pasta, I know what you're talking about. Like we're not confusing each other here. Mm-hmm. So what? Like yes, that's the Italian like correct thing when we're saying penne, but you also know what I say when I say noodle, right? I'm not out here calling it a tortilla or pica de gallo. Or salsa, like I'm not just like completely butchering and fucking it up, like so, like why, like it's just it's so obnoxious. Like how much are you getting paid? But even, to do this kind of obnoxious shit on the internet, even if you did do all that, I would still know what you meant. Exactly, because the same fucking thing. Like you, these people are just they're just like little gnats online. So I'm just I want to know how much you get paid to be fucking annoying online, or is this just like your hobby? This is like what you do for fun. There's a through line between those people. And the kids when we were younger that were like, oh, excuse me, you forgot to assign his homework. Like, shut the fuck up. Stop does, talking. Like this shit, it's a, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Well, the problem to is you like, or to anyone else to correct us. Like, it's not a noodle. It's called pasta. It's not like, shut the fuck up. Go in the basement and fight it out with the wall. Like, because no one cares. Like, nobody cares. Should we start sending like gladiator? tools down there and just let him just like deal with it you and the dust bunnies can fight about it for the rest of time because like nobody it's the same it's the same thing that's a good one also because people you want to engage them sometimes but you also don't want to give it because it's like what is your day looking like if this is what you are worried about yeah noodles the broad umbrella you can call it whatever the fuck you you pasta udon this that like help like we can break it down and get really fucking specific about the names and proper terms and in which countries call it what all day long. But at the end of the day, when we say noodle, we all know what the fuck we're talking about. 
Mm-hmm. So shut the fuck up. It was just annoying. Well, sometimes it doesn't have to be that deep. Sometimes it can be annoying people in the basement. Yeah. The basement is a spectrum. All kinds of basement. Behavior. So are noodles. Who's <laughs> in your basement? My basement. Obviously my ear infection. My Van mm-hmm. Gogh ear. Basement. And then I just, my lease ended. So I just got a new car and it was just so frustrating at the very end of it. I had to bring it in for its annual maintenance before returning it. And I had a tire, a nail in two of my tires. So I got to replace those two tires just mm-hmm. to give it back. And there was just nothing I could do about it, which was a huge bummer. So those tires in the basement, I hope they hit a noodle hater on the way down. <laughs> hit him in the noodle on the way down? Mm-hmm. So mine's not, that, mine's not that. I do. I did. It was amazing. Okay. Anyway, I, yeah, mine's not that deep th- this week, but. Also, you know what? I have my, these are my shapewear leggings today. They're not the pill ones. I just noticed I put a nice pair on. Should we dub dub DD? Yeah. (laughs) Aoife says, hi girlies. I've been with my boyfriend for over a year. We have just moved in together and I've discovered he's been using OnlyFans, buying, not selling. My question is, if he's willing to do the work and communicate, would you forgive him? Love Aoife. Very curious your thoughts on this. Oh. So also, I feel like we did need more information because OnlyFans isn't like unlike if they're just watching porn or whatever, you can communicate with the person and like have an ongoing. Yeah, you can buy like. Videos, you can specific, you can buy like chat with them. So I, I, I want to know, like, what is he purchasing? Right. Or is it just is it just a subscription? Is he just paying to subscribe to channels, which is still like kind of weird, but like. I don't know. How do you feel? Okay, so we're going to let's just we have to work with the information. We I'm have, not, which is I'm not as so. familiar with with OnlyFans. I was like, I don't really know. Like you're paying for naked people. You can I think it's I think it's also a spectrum like suggested nudity to actual porn. So but I think there is an element that there is interactiveness. Lay, do you want to yeah. clarify this for us? So it's like the Patreon of porn. Yeah, let's call. Let's go with that. So with OnlyFans, people can pay for content, photos, videos, and live streams via a monthly membership, subscriptions, direct messaging, tips, pay-per-view content, and more. Okay, so because you can get direct messaging, that is that is a little bit of a red flag. That the the direct line of communication, I don't like. You know, um, I don't have an issue with people paying. For content, paying for subscriptions, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's much of an issue. If it bothers you, I can't tell you. It. I can't tell you for it not to bother you. You know. I think it's. It's. That's always like a personal kind of boundary and a personal preference of like what you're willing to tolerate. Um, but I think you have to express that to this person. And I mean, if he and if it's something that he's not willing to change, and you're not willing to bend on it, then probably it's going to be an ongoing issue in your relationship to echo what you said it's it's a boundary you have to decide for yourself so i think it can't be put into a bucket because i think different people feel differently about it mm-hmm. like i i don't think i would care about only fan, fans for me like that's but that's just me so if it is something that bothers you what she's saying is if he's willing to do the work but is he like he might not see this as a problem or have a different definition of like cheating or overstepping or yeah anything like that so i think it's really important to talk with him to understand like is it something you want to work on because if you put it to him and he is like okay i'll work on this but for you and he doesn't feel that way about it it will probably keep coming up and that could lead to maybe more deceit and whatnot so i would say the first step here is just to have a really open conversation and also maybe like ask in a non-threatening way questions like Mm -hmm. like what were you what were you seeking with this i'm just curious like do you feel like something's missing from our relationship is it something that has absolutely nothing to do with our relationship because those things can be real they can coexist i would try to understand his perspective on it Mm -hmm. even if you don't share the same perspective just to try to understand where he's coming from on it and then share your your perspective on it so he can try to see your side of things and if there's a way to meet in the middle, if not, you know, then you got some things to think about. And I understand that you just moved in together. So that's a whole nother logistic when it's like, OK, we're tying a life. But then what you have mm-hmm. to decide is if this is a problem for you and it's coming up this early in terms of 
the, the the grand scheme, if you could see yourself having a future with them, then it doesn't really make sense for you to continue investing, even though no. you just moved in together. So yeah. figure it out now. 100%. Lily, my camumdrum. Hello, my angels. First off, thank you for this podcast. It's been an empowering journey for me. I met a guy the other week, Inge, and we were hitting it off like crazy. We've been having insanely good sex and I feel safe when I'm around him, but now I'm fucking terrified. Is this you? <laughs> I know. Just told you I was off the apps. <laughs> I know I'm projecting past experiences and I know that I should be enjoying this amazing connection and see where it goes, but I can't stop fearing abandonment for the next ball to drop. Can you lovely ladies offer any advice on how I can get out of my head and learn to trust the process more? How do I play this cool when I'm in fact not cool? Love you both, Lily. Well, <laughs> I think, I think right now you have to just be in the right now. Don't think about things that haven't happened yet. Don't worry about what the outcome is going to be. I think just being ultra present and focus on the getting to know this person process and having fun with that and letting that, you know, reveal itself of like what it's going to be. You can't control it. Mm -mm. It's going to be what it's going to be. And just really just trying to be ultra present is all you have to do. It's and also it's so much easier said than done. I, I know it's, it's but, totally I you're right. But it is like I just want to give space for that because it no, is I'm, so hard. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that's it's like, oh, yeah, easy. I'm just saying as much as you can just constantly get yourself back into that space. Is is like what the goal should be. And the goal shouldn't be to be uh, focusing on the person and where it's going and worrying about them leaving or worrying about abandonment. It should be worrying about whether you like this person, finding, discovering things you like about them, discovering how you feel when you're with them. Just like, just like always kind of bringing the energy back to you and the moment and all that. I would also say, she's probably not gonna wanna hear this, but if this is a consistent pattern you're having when you're liking someone and then all of a sudden it sends you into this area, it is possibly something you need to take a beat from dating and examine too of like, why when you start to really like someone you all of a sudden feel very unsafe and it sends you into this spiral and i know this from personal experience because this used to be how i was so definitely trying to stay present if you really like them and you're already in it with them but you will probably keep running into this if you don't examine like where that's coming from and obviously if you have past trauma in relationships it's again not that easy but something yeah. to definitely explore but i think being aware that you are projecting past experiences if you know that then huge we're big that's a great start so being aware of it so say this is the past so stop it also you and i are both very uncool in this way too so like when we like like someone it does happen so i also understand like yeah. you don't have to i don't think you have to play it cool also being able to be with someone safe enough to just say like hey this is what's coming up for me and mm -hmm. if you can't then that's probably not the right person for you totally angelina says hey girls love your new pod and enjoy hearing your advice during wwdd I'd love to hear your advice input on something. I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm 29, almost 30, and still a virgin. I've been talking and sexting to this guy online for about two months. We're like virtual friends with benefits. I was thinking about meeting up with him, but don't know if I should tell him I'm a virgin or not. Because of the embarrassment and because of his possible reaction, what do you think? Okay, you have to tell him. You you're literally virgin. have to tell him. <laughs> and honestly, I, I, listen, I know some people... He, he, might be a bit taken aback but like i don't think that there's anything wrong with that i don't know I, I don't there's nothing wrong with it at all but also i personally don't think you should be having sex with someone you don't feel comfortable enough to have a conversation like that with like especially if it's your first time like you and you're probably going to be very nervous and don't worry nothing to be nervous about you'll get there but like you need to be able to explore that with someone and let them know like hey this is just where i'm at and it'll probably greatly improve your experience because mm -hmm. it's like the pressure is off of like you're like hiding that or like am i doing it right and there could be pain associated and just like different things because yeah, you want to be able to be out of your head yeah i mean you could kind of make a joke of it i don't know yeah like, it doesn't need like, to be this like this huge like reveal or like grand it doesn't need to be like watch this watch this <laughs> like no you it doesn't need to be a big confession just like i would say especially if you're already having enough comfortability with them to have some sexting going on you mm -hmm. should be able to like discuss that so i say 
tell him and go for it if you feel comfortable. Yeah. Have fun. We're rooting for you. Let us know how it goes. Let us know right, right back in. <laughs> Anonymous says, my guy friend and I, both 25, who actively pursued me for a year, decided to start dating. We were together for about six months until we had a check-in and he says he's not ready. Huh? We went back to being friendly immediately, like literally got lunch the next day. Due to events, him dating someone else, I realized that I still have feelings for him. What do I do? This guy sucks. He sucks. Cut him. Cut him. Cut him out of your life. Cut him out. Immediately. You have more respect for yourself. And have and put up some boundaries because he pursued you for a year. You started dating and then he said he's not ready. But then he started dating someone else like the man is full of games. And he wants to get lunch with you the next day. He wants to be able to keep you in his he, life. He wants to keep you on the hook. And when you say and if if you go back and or not go back, if you immediately put up boundaries and say, like, listen, um, no, you don't get access to me like that this is hurtful and especially if you have feelings for him i know it's going to be hard and even more difficult to kind of keep him at a distance i'm not saying you don't have to like ever talk to him or anything like that but like ha like the relationship with him and towards him needs to drastically change and you need to have more respect than also that. these these feelings that you have for him are not going to go away when he's in your life and especially if you're watching him date someone else Mm -hmm. The only way to have someone in your life that you have previously dated or have feelings for, in my opinion, is for there to be at least a grace period until mm -hmm. that simmers down. You cannot just switch to being friends. It's not going to work. It's unproductive. And you're lying to yourself. So this guy is a troll. And it's un unfortunately, if someone doesn't want to date you, that's OK. You're allowed to not want to date them. But then he needs to be clear with you about that and not make it about that. He's just not ready. And then to date someone else. Like yeah, it's called a cop out. Yeah. No, he's dead to us, so cut him out. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But you're going to be better off. And, it, and, and cutting him off and allowing yourself to like heal from that and letting those feelings simmer will open yourself up to somebody else. And then it's his last. Mm -hmm. Cynthia says, so excited for your new venture. So I need some advice on how to stop investing my time in friendships that don't get anywhere. It's exhausted trying to maintain friendships that don't bring any value and I'm all about protecting my peace. I feel guilt when I don't partake in what they want, but I feel like I compromise much more of my time. What is your advice on dealing with friendships that just no longer serve you? Cut it out. Again, yeah. I'm like, for me, this is just what led to true happiness and peace at this point in my life. I, I do not entertain any type of energy that isn't working for me if it's platonic, romantic, and sometimes relationships do change. And if you just feel like, you're putting it in and even if they want you to do something and you don't feel like you're up for it, like there's no reason in feeling guilt about spending more time with yourself or trying to meet new people. So I say it doesn't and it doesn't need to be this like mean thing where you're like, fuck you, I hate you. It can very much just be like I'm honoring this for what it is and I'm just going to kind of let it fade. Yeah, I think letting it fade is is totally fine because I think also we go through different chapters and seasons and changes in our lives so like naturally you and you need to allow yourself to change too and that means letting go of things that don't serve you and relationships that don't promote that kind of change and um don't bring that kind of value to your life i think it keeps you mm -hmm. kind of stunted in a place that you no longer want to be so you got to move along I agree. I mean, it's just, yeah, taking evaluation. I think I've maybe made this analogy before, but there's one that goes stop reaching out first and see how many dead plants you're watering. That's true. If you feel like you're not getting it back, it's actually really easy to not have those relationships. Just stop putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Kimberly, I have a fun question for you both. I was born July 25th, 1990. Yep. Same birthday as you, Dana. <laughs> I just want to ask you both if you have any crazy, fun, wild birthday memories to share. Just any birthday that stuck out to you and why. Also, I took a picture of Katie's haircut to, <laughs> to my stylist. I'm obsessed. I love it. I call it the Kimmy Maloney. <laughs> That's funny. This would only make sense to Office fans, but someone asked why Jim asked Dwight once like what his favorite birthday memory was. And he was like, cold, wet, a tremendous pressure. Man with white gloves. And the reason I'm bringing that up 
is because I would say two that stick out to me would be my first one because my mom and I have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. So that's very special. And she just, you know, so I had that same cold white, white, white light. (laughs) Another one. The only reason this stands out to me is because, you know, I'm not I'm not messy when I'm drinking and like partying. It's not a thing. I'm never the girl with like puke in her hair that like can't get her shit together. Like I am very much if I've gone too far, I send myself home. This is disgusting, but at the university I went to, we had something, and maybe it's like a common thing. It's called a chain of pain. So you put airplane shots on, like as a necklace. And so for your 21st birthday, everyone does like mini bottles. Yeah. And uh-huh. you have to like finish it before you go out, which is psychotic. So my birthday was in the summertime. So it wasn't at the actual school, but I finished it. I think there was like five or six, and I finished it. And that's before, and your 21st birthday, everyone is getting you drinks and it's you know a whole thing so we got to the bar i remember about five minutes of being there absolutely was throwing up at the bar got kicked out um my best friend shout out courtney i love you have always held me down since the first time i accidentally threw up in a car when i was like 17 she could we couldn't get at the time this is not uber this is not you know there's no lift we couldn't get a car all she could find was a town car so she like found this town car in downtown seattle and shoved me in it and i just puked everywhere so that was a nightmare. Probably one of my least flattering birthday stories, but the only one I can think of that stands out. Oh my God. What about you? I don't know. I mean, nothing like crazy or wild, but I would say like the last two birthdays I had were two of my favorite, I think. Just in terms of just being like really easy, no fuss, no nothing, just fun. Very Like fun. my birthday last year was just like with girlfriends and we went dancing and just had such a fun night. And then the one this year just was like easy bar. So many friends came and it just, I don't know, just like perfect. Do you describe yourself as a birthday person? I love my birthday, but because I'm never somebody that ever like likes attention or like making things about myself. There's just one time a year I will. I, and I will. <laughs> well, and, and she's going to do and it. she will. Because like Raleigh's such a birthday person. She does half birthdays. She celebrates her, her parents literally do on her half birthday, like celebrate it. It's a whole thing. But so for me, birthdays are special in terms of because just because I share it with my mom, but mm-hmm. I'm not a big birthday person. So every year I do the same thing, which is also my favorite. We go to the same restaurant, one of my favorite, my favorite restaurant in L.A. Oh, gee. My absolute fave. We do the same group of people, like just chill dinner and then usually like just go dancing, whatever. And it's no muss, no fuss, and very fun. But I love people who go all out for birthdays, but I'm the same way, which fucking love attention and uh, no shame in that game. But for, yeah, my birthday, I just don't care. I just want to do my good dinner and go hang out with my friends. Yeah, I don't, yeah, whatever's like kind of just an easy place for friends to gather. Well, great. Yeah, make sure you guys keep writing in questions or if you have fun, crazy stories you want us to read. I know we keep forgetting to say that. So disrespectfullypod at gmail.com. We love them. Please keep sending them in as short as you can. And then, yeah, we would love to add a new segment where like just any stories you guys have from your lives that you think would be interesting that other disrespectfully listeners need to know. Send it on in. (laughs) Yeah. Should I make you an ear necklace after this? Yeah, I want your ear. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. You're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully.